Hello and welcome. This is Big Ben from Hong Kong with more tales from the periphery of show business. And I'm really realising we really are the periphery. A lot of the people I know are based in Hong Kong and in Singapore, far away from the mecca of the United States where most of my listeners are. So here we are. This is my second interview uh, from Singapore. I'm talking to Jonathan Heron, John Danger. You can check him out at um, eventmagic.com.sg. S for Singapore and G for girl. Also, all the links to his YouTube channel and his Vimeo channel and all the names of the people he, he, he talks about will be in the description uh, to this podcast. Um, plus, if you want to listen to any of my old episodes, you can check the old episodes of my podcast out at www.thebigbenshow.com. That's my website. I'll put that up in the description as well. Now, Jonathan Heron is a guy I met ages ago, right back about 20 years when I was starting out. He was starting out about the same time. He's an everything guy. He does everything. Magic, bubbles, circus shows, the quick change costume act, climbing inside the giant balloon. He even does black light shows. It's a great interview. We talk about so much stuff. How to start a show, how to finish a show, what kind of music to use, how to use it, what to do if there's no CD player. We talk about bubble shows, we talk about microphones, we talk about mistakes, dealing with um, mistakes, we talk about marketing, we talk about tips about nerves and stage frights, we talk about some of the worst shows he's ever had. <laughs> Well, let's go and listen to him. Here he is, John Heron, a.k.a. John Danger. What would you be your job description? I perform, talent manage, and teach magic and circus to children. Performing, talent, talent management, and teaching kids circus yes. skills. Alrighty, yes. cool. And where are you from, John? Originally, I was born in Reading. Oh, but um, my formative years were in Manchester, Manchester. England. Manchester. And your family? Mainly residing in England. Yeah. i got a brother and a sister in uh, London. Another sister, which is uh, sort of near the Midlands. My other brother lives in Geneva. Right. Uh, why am I interested in Are you the youngest? The oldest? I am. I'm the youngest of five, the, the baby, baby of the family. So were, were they either your siblings or your mum and dad, were they any of you, any of them a big influence on you, John? Uh, all of them. They're awesome, my family. Excellent. <laughs> Great. And in what ways have they influenced you in, in related to your job right now? Related to my job? Um, just unconditional support. Support. Brilliant. And when I stopped working for an advertising agency to essentially become a clown. Yeah. You know, a little bit of family ridicule, but I mean, basically. It was okay. Things, yeah. things, you know. Well, this is what I'm fascinated by because, like, everybody I spoke to has some weird way that they fell into this career. So, how how did you? Uh, how did it happen for you? I was working as a media planner buyer at an advertising agency but what in country? Singapore. So, in what, Singapore. What, where were you in Singapore though? Because you're from uh, Manchester. I was backpacking with uh. my friends, and I woke up on a bus in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, a first world country yeah. appeared yeah. overnight yeah. for me. No, Karen, it's okay. We're recording. We're seeing how well here John and interacts with kids, you see. <laughs> Years of experience as he interacts with his daughter here live on the podcast. His daughter's very quiet, isn't she? I don't know if you can hear her. She's asking about numbers. Can we do this later? No, you can do it now if you want. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want. Just, oh, edit, just well, edit that out. No, we can edit a little bit, yeah, shorten a bit. So you're, you end up in Singapore, 
And yes. you notice that this is our first world country. Oh, it's brilliant. So it's isn't different it? to, to Thailand and yeah, Malaysia. Yeah, especially well, that would be what, 1993? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Thailand wasn't the force that it, that it is, it is now. now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite expensive now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we go here. I made a lot of friends here. Yeah. It's very westernized, which is, which is nice. Uh, yeah, I got a job for an advertising agency. And uh, Roy, who you interviewed one time, Roy, be, Roy before Pemmel. me, yeah. Roy, um, my ad agency needed a clown for a job at the International Merchandise Mart, which okay. is a big shopping mall here. Right, right. Um, so we could only find Roy, and then they said, John, you know how to do all that juggling and circusy stuff. When did you, you learn that? So. I, I'd learned it while I was backpacking around uh, mainly like India and Thailand and just, Middle East. That just sort picked of thing. it up? Yeah, well, yeah, I, can't, I can't sunbathe. I can't just sit there and do nothing. Yeah. It, it, I just can't. So, I mean, juggling and you know, anything to keep myself occupied. But you hadn't, so you didn't learn it as a, as a, as a young kid? You weren't like no, a magic, you were no. not like a teenager who did magic shows? No, not at all. I sort of enjoyed it, as all children do, and yeah. I was like mystified by it. Yeah. Um, but the cheap tricks from the magic shop, I mean, they never really no. work, do they? No. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I, I did that job. And yeah. I thought it was just a bit of, uh, bit of climbing the corporate ladder, doing something for our client, a bit yeah. above and beyond. Yeah. And then uh, about three weeks... So you did the juggling? I, I did jug, of jug, juggling, clowning with Roy. With they, Roy. Need, they needed two clowns. Wow, you knew Roy that early on? So that, that's when I first met him. Wow. That's when I first met him. And um, yeah, about two, three weeks later... Yeah. I got a check for that job, which yeah. was a Saturday, Sunday, about four or five hours each yeah. day. Yeah. And it was $10 less than my monthly salary. Oh, wow. So I literally quit. Yeah. I literally quit with this two-month salary, essentially. Yeah. Then I went down to um, Bali with my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Uh, we stayed there for about like eight weeks while I... You know, learn how to do Diablo and juggling, and <laughs> all all the all the all these things that I would need to do. Yeah. And then came back here, set up Event Magic, which is still going today. Uh, but that would be like '97. I was I, I was working for like three years before. You were working. I was working for the agency for like three years before I quit. Okay, so you 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 come to Singapore, you get a job as an advertiser. Advertising agency. Yeah, media planner. Media planner. And you meet Roy for a, a juggling clown. They needed a clown. One, of the, one of your clients needed a clown, and, and you, you did it as well with Roy. Correct. And you got paid a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. And then and then immediately you quit the advertising? Not immediately, surely. Uh, I think within about a week. <laughs> no way. And this was in like 1990. Six, 1996, yeah. 1996 or 97. And about this time, I was in Singapore, and I hadn't met you. I think I might have met Roy, saw him doing a show. But I definitely heard somebody had told me that there was somebody juggling fire somewhere on the streets of Singapore. I'm pretty certain that was you. Oh, we used to, we used to go down to, uh, yes, there was, a, there was another accomplished juggler. Um, so... He and I went busking on Orchard one time, so we did a little bit of fire, but we very soon got chased off. Yeah. Uh, but then we found fire juggling at Sentosa on the beach. Right. Where it's a great way to meet people. Ah. Predominantly females. Ah. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I would do the juggling and then, um, you know, they would... They would They'd get there around in awe of your amazing bus, prowess. Bus, bus. <laughs> Busking for, 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 for drinks and girls and good times. Yeah. And stuff, really. And how did you realise... Sidebar, that? if you are ever going to do that, don't do fire breathing as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one wants to kiss, kiss Mr. Firemouth. Kerosene yeah. in their mouth. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, so I'm still curious. Uh, you, you knew you could make a living just from that single weekend of paid work. Yeah. Because well, well, I, I I felt that I could. Yeah. Uh, I saw that Roy sort of was, although right. al although he's not, you know, not the not the richest man in the world. No, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Because um, Singapore at that time, it did actually have, once you realised, once you looked around, there were shows everywhere, oh, community yeah, shows, were, shopping centre uh, shows, and they were looking for entertainers, and there weren't many around. Exactly, exactly. Unlike now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, your brother's an entrepreneur? Uh, brother's in the family? Mm, right. My oldest brother, David, is, uh, is a property developer. Okay. So, uh, very rich, very poor, very rich again. Right. Um, Makes a million, loses a million kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, second time rich is, is that how he <laughs> likes to term it. So, it's still a pretty big leap. I kind of, because for me, you were my inspiration to go full time. Oh, bless you. You're the blame for me. Because <laughs> I come from a family of teachers, and I never thought of being self employed mm. and setting up my own business. And, uh, and then I saw that it can be done because I, I saw you doing it. Yeah. And then you did it better than me. No. <laughs> well, maybe for the first year. <laughs> a plot. <laughs> That's brilliant. So you start getting work. Um, yeah, it's, it was slow at first. It was yeah. slow at first. It was a bit of a slog in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, it's also I, kind I, of hard in Singapore because as a foreigner, just to be able to stay here being self-employed, you've got to work out all your permits, uh, line yeah, up your ducks. That, that's why I set up my own business. Right. I, I registered a business yeah. with a local manager who was, I guess, my girlfriend at the yeah. time. Yeah. So that way I was through. But I already had an employment pass from the from the multinational that I was working for. Yeah. So it was a matter of just swapping employer, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's one of the things that people are going to find if they're listening to this podcast. You can go to countries where, where there is a, a niche, but suddenly it's quite hard to get a, get a permit. Uh, you have to, you have yeah, to kind of yeah, find out yeah. The way. Especially if, um, you know, the term is busker. Yeah. Or... Clown. I mean, that, so, that, what did you write in your application? Does. Did you say I'm a businessman? I'm a uh, <laughs> event producer. Event I think. producer. There you go. Yeah, I think something like that. Event production, which was kind of you know has a very wide scope. Yeah. Which allowed me to do that. Um, yeah, we just set up a business account, and then here we are, nearly 21 years later. I think. Yeah, you've done it for 21 years. So uh, very quickly then. First things were juggling, uh, and then magic, and then this yeah, one for your stuff. Um, I started, I was uh, juggling, it includes anything with more, more props and hands, yeah. so like Diablo yeah. and Flower Stick and yeah. stuff like that. Um, unicycle I never quite mastered as well as you. <laughs> um, Thank you. So then I, um, Uncle Bob. Yeah. Bob Bob Chua, the king of cards. I'll interview him eventually, sooner or later, when I get some free yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a legend. Uh, he taught me how to do a pink panther. Oh, the balloon. Balloon. Yeah. balloon. Uh, then I kind of got into balloons. Yeah. Uh, then we were selling balloons, twisted balloons, while well, it was quite novel, yeah. in Suntex City. Oh. They gave us a space for free. That's one thing I thought about you. You're always working out new ways to, to make money. To take money from people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well... We, uh, I went busking doing balloons because it was it was it's tangible, you see. Yeah. So you know, like a teddy bear with a heart, it's like about two dollars. Yeah. Singapore dollar, you know. There you go. Um, you know, then you do like an Elmo or mm. something like that. It would be about five bucks. Oh, you're making good money. Yeah. Then and it was quite a new thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was back no, in the nineties. There was nobody else doing it. And then six months later, there were several people. Everybody. Yeah, I mean, we, we had people stood there for hours watching us to see how we did it and uh, worked and that sort of thing. And how did you find it out? Because the internet was pretty basic back then. Um, I bought books and, yeah. you know, went through a, a lot of balloons. Just yeah. you know, like look at something, and like, you know. Yeah. As you know, there's only... Ten different types of twist for a balloon, yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So you you can see, and you're able to blow the you're able, you're able to self yeah the for a smoker. That's yeah. uh, that's, that, that, yeah. that's really surprising. Yeah, I can still do that. That <laughs> that, that brings me great joy now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I practiced in the gym for about six months. Mm. Every time I before I started my weight training, I'd have a go at blowing a balloon, and I can do it now. Uh, it it really is technique. <laughs> it's hard it? work though. It's technique. It is technique. Um, right, so then... Went to balloons. And balloons. Then, uh, sort of self-working magic. 
Right. Yeah, like like the simple stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not, as you know, I'm not. I wasn't Las Vegas flashy. I was more comical. But good. Yeah, way better than me. I was. Bad, I was but, like, whoa, he's really done this stuff. <laughs> all right, bless he's you. put some hours in. <laughs> Um, yeah, then it was, yeah, then, then magic, um, magic, I say I got into magic, I, I, I got into performing for the money, mm. really, because I saw, I saw, yeah, okay, I, so I, I you... saw it as a viable way to make money, yeah, so, whereas I got into magic just to sort of, like, very much show, yeah, but, um, to be a 40-year-old magician is better than a 40-year-old clown. Yeah. Put that, put that sort of tag on it. Well, no, yeah, we have to talk about as you get older, certain things get harder. The physical juggling skills and the... Yeah, yeah. That, but that, but that, magic has quite a long career. It does. I mean, your longevity there with, with, with magic is there. Plus, uh, you can you could take you could feasibly just take what's in your pockets and, and perform. You don't have to carry so much around. Yeah. Because well, singing was really hot. Do you when, you, when you do <laughs> stage magic... Yeah. And you just got so many props. Yeah. You got so much, so much stuff to carry. I mean, I got it down to a fine art. You know I me. Mean? I make sure everything is collapsible, yeah. flat, pad, yeah. this, that. If it, if it if it doesn't fold, I don't use anything. It. Anything specific? I like anything really, really specific that you've worked how to fold up really small. Um. We can come back to that. Yeah, on the on the spot. No, no. But no. yes, you have but everything. Ditch, uh, <clears throat> we all need a ditch bag. Okay. Those. Laundry hampers that right. fold. Oh yeah. Down to a little circle. Yeah. And then they then they pop up. Oh yeah. They're awesome. Okay, so you, when you've done a trick, you can just ditch yeah, it into just this into your collapsible ditch, bag in, that yeah, pops up. Into your ditch bag. It's a bit like one of those tents that just springs the wires. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Up. Very much so. That's good. Same sort of thing that people put on their car yeah. windows yeah. to stop the sun coming in. Yes. Like that. Yeah, those those things, they're they're very good. You just put a piece of material around it and you know you put black satin around it, it looks very nice, doesn't it? Excellent, yeah, that's uh, the stuff we want to hear yeah, about. Yeah, that pops up. Um, making your own tables and a flight case is great. A flight case, yeah. A flight case is great. Put wheels on it, you know your local hardware shop. Yeah. Okay. Put four wheels on it so it can roll. Yeah. And there you go. You do. And the flight case is one of those black boxes. Yeah, like a like like, like a, a black wooden box maybe yeah. with some that for me that with, is, with the silver um, with the yeah you know, that, aluminium uh, strips and corners. Yeah, I, I think it's literally called a flight, flight case. It's a it's a it's a it's a metal an aluminium box. It's normally like corrugated, isn't it? Yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, with two locking hinges on the yeah. front. Those. They're, they're just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can you open it up. Yeah. Uh, landscape. Yes. Call it. You can open it up landscape. Yes. And then you have... Then you're completely blocked off. It blocks you off. Yeah, it blocks you off. Or if you turn it on end mm. and open it portrait. Yes. So you've got like a V-shape in front of yeah. you. Yeah, then you, then you can put shelves there. Oh, that's very clever. There you go. This is what I'm here. Brilliant. Yeah, so I mean... That sort of thing, ease of access. Yeah. I like to I like to take things from my pockets. Yeah. But um, I guess Singapore's best magician, J C. Yeah. J C. Sum. I should try and interview him as well. Yeah. yeah. J C. Sum. He don't work from your pockets. So I, I I work with him and he's very he's very polished. So yeah. now I have a I tend to have on my table on my box. I have like an extra bowler hat, and then all my props go inside there. And okay. I take them from the take them from there. From the bowler them, hat. Use them, and they go in the the ditch bag. The ditch bag, I like that phrase. Because you ditch bag. Yeah, because you, well, you need to ditch yourself. And I think most importantly for a performer, is you need to get off stage quick. Oh yeah, this is what I want to hear about. When it, when, 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 it, when it's the end of your when you you know you've taken your final bow and everybody's clapped. Yeah. Ten seconds, you've got to be off. Yeah. You've got to be off. And yeah, off. you don't want to go off and then creep back on again and start yeah, catching to, everything off, to, off the floor. To collect things. <laughs> That's where having an assistant yeah. is good. Yeah. But, but it costs money. But Yeah, it costs money, and if you have a ditch bag, you don't need an assistant. Yeah. As you walk off, you just take your table, which is on wheels, as we just discussed. Yeah. 
in your left hand, say, and then your right hand picks up the ditch bag, just drop it off the side of the stage, go down the steps, around the back, pick it up, done. Yeah. A very wise man once told me if you have two boxes, one that's slightly smaller than the other... <laughs> was that me? Yes, it was. <laughs> that you fill one box, you put the other box on top of it, turn it over, and you are ready for your next show. Yeah, that, that's uh, when my Audrey put a... Uh, I'll have to make a video about that. That, is, that, that was... <laughs> Of all my ideas, that one is that one is very smart, Benny. Right? You usurped my idea in this thing. Okay, yeah. So my one is, um, I'll see if I can describe it. I got a, I got a box that fits inside my box. So I take out the, the slightly smaller box, and that becomes my ditch box. And then throughout the show, I'm putting everything into my ditch box. So the, the, the first thing you use goes in the bottom of the box. Yes. The second thing you use in your show goes in, goes on, on top. On top of it, yeah. So it's like a layer cake. Yeah. And then when you're finished... I put a lid on the ditch box and then turn it turn upside it, down. Turn it upside down. And has, it has a... Has, um, and it's uh, ready to go. I lower it back into the main box and it's ready to go for the next it show. It's ready to go, all in order. <laughs> Have a getting Absolutely on. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thanks very much, John. Thank you. Mm-hmm. How about getting onto stage? Is that a problem? Getting onto stage fast? Um, no, not really. Not if you're circus or magic. The the few seconds that it takes to walk in, yeah. there's always things you can do. Yeah. Uh, hat manipulation. Just spin your hat or yeah. anything. Uh, spin out cards. Start to juggle. Um, the professional professionals always say you should come out and. Welcome your audience with your arms and okay. have a bow and then start. But, yeah. um, like we used to do. I mean, we used to, the, the music kicked in and within three seconds we were already on and, yeah. and doing something. What kind of music do you use? Is it hard? Do you have music cues that people uh, don't follow? Um, no, do you I, have a remote bur- I, burn, I, I burn a CD. Yeah. And it, my, I write on the, on the cover. Yeah. Just press play. Ah, same as me. Yeah, and j- just leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I have about 15, 20 minutes worth of music. Yeah. And I got I got routines to there. Yeah. Because if you turn up to an event and there isn't an audience, or there isn't an audience yet. Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, or you need a volunteer yeah. for one of your segments. But there's no audience. But there's no audience. No, then, then you need to be able to do stuff to music. Yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. So you play the music, you hit the music, you go on stage, you start your show. You've got about 15 to 20 minutes. I, I, I do 12 to 15 minutes. 12 to 15 minutes. All music. Yes. Then about 10 minutes of like some voluntary, interaction y stuff. Yeah. And then finish with, with, with music again, something like the Big Balloon or. The Big Balloon, where you get inside the giant balloon, yeah. Yeah, like that sort of thing. Probably um, in America, where there's more people doing the giant balloon, they have their own theories on how to do it. Have you got any? Have you come up with any special ideas on the giant balloon where you climb inside it? Um. Yeah. Don't just have everything, but anything, anything specific. You, no. Use a solid color, not transparent. Really. Solid color, in my experience, twice as strong. They ah. last you twice as long. Ah. Uh, um. Sidebar, Ben and I did um, show in seven, 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 I think nearly, nearly eight weeks in Hong Kong in Ocean Park. Yeah. And we used uh, clear latex balloons yes. there. And uh, 16, 16 times you managed to use. Was the maximum. Lucky latex Lucy. I remember that balloon, yeah. Lucky latex balloon. Lucy. Yeah. 16 times, I, yeah. think, I think, was the amount. Um, the blue one that you used one time when you were filling a show for me yeah. a few months ago. Yeah. That one about 12, about 12, 13 times Brilliant. I used that. I had that for a, for a month. About, about, yeah, about six weeks. <laughs> about six weeks. Yeah, I was, I was in and out of that, no problem at all. And it didn't burst. It oh, brilliant. just had a series of small, tiny holes. Yeah. Which form when you stand on the stage. Okay. Because I've always found, maybe I've been unlucky where I bought my coloured balloons and they've always been a bit We have to weaker. be careful because the colour, the, 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 they're called G400s or something. Okay. Or, or G410s. Yeah. All right. Um, if it doesn't have the really wide neck, okay. then it's just normal thickness. Okay. Yeah. 
for, for can what? you get them in Singapore these yeah, from, yeah, from, from Balloon Baron from, from Balloon Baron next time I'll order, order some as well yeah uh, well when you go in there's the counter there do oh, you, I, I, oh, I'll, oh. Just, I'll just do a mail order uh, from yeah. Hong Kong yeah 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 tell them you you, get some you want the ones that I get yeah I should do that yeah because they only have limited they only so have there we go there's a shout out to the Balloon Baron in Singapore, if you want to get colour balloons, so six, sure six seven eight five four nine two nine. Wow, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> uh, the only way, the only one I can, weird one I came up with recently is um, as, as you continually use a giant balloon, one of the problems is um, as you unroll it, it, it starts to roll itself up, and then you, and if you don't un- unroll it. You don't unroll the funnel fast oh, enough, it gets stuck. Immediately. The gonna, neck. Yeah, the neck. The neck rolls it in on itself. Yeah. Otherwise, it seems to kind of fuse together and glues itself together. Two ways to do that. My way is, is KY jelly inside the neck. Ah, that is, that, is, that is very interesting. When I go inside the balloon, there's a little baggie of KY jelly, and I smear it on the inside of the neck. Ah. And that, that's really easy. You do come out of your hair kind of slightly greased by KY jelly, then the show. When I'm inside and I'm pulling the balloon close yeah. with one hand, yeah. I unfurl it then. Ah. When I'm inside the inside. balloon. Inside, okay, okay. So but then when you take it off, isn't it going to roll up again? No. No, you're just done. When you climb in, yeah. it rolls in. Yeah, yeah. So once you're already out, when you're pulling it out of your body, you're unrolling it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it rolls up a little bit, right, right. but when I, when I step out, I use my right hand to put the balloon behind my back, yeah. and as I bow, I'm, I'm unrolling, unrolling it. it. Ah, but don't, don't you find as you roll it down your, down from the hips downwards, it's starting to roll itself. Ah, uh, I don't roll. I, just I open wide. Yeah, I, I I open wide, so there's a massive yeah. gust of wind and step out. There's probably thousands of American, thousands of people listening to this podcast. Going, <laughs> yeah, we know that. There's so many Americans who do this. We all our friends, but out here in Singapore and Hong Kong, so many people who do this. So. Mm. That's what we learnt. Juggling inside, it looks very nice. Cool. Juggling inside with uh, glow uh, balls. With, with with LED balls. Yeah. yeah. I mean that that looks great in a transparent one, but the problem with the transparent ones are they're not so strong. Ah. You know, it's there's there's a good chance that even the the screw in part on your LED plastic ball yeah we'll where, you pop put, it. where you put the batteries in yeah yeah yeah, yeah that 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 could pop it okay yeah. ah. so that's why i don't do transparent and the idea that people can see you inside mm. i think it looks better i think the solid color looks better i think the problem with me probably is i didn't use them enough i left them under the bed or well, in the you, fridge you, for you too long you could do a costume change as well yeah, yeah. You know, you throw, throw, out a, throw out a t-shirt. If you're in a solid colour, you can throw clothes out and look you like you're stripping. Yeah, look like you're stripping. Yeah. Come out in, I don't know, sexy lingerie or something. All right. oh, this is brilliant. I don't care if anybody listens to this podcast. I've learned something. <laughs> you should try those solid colours after all. Never mind. Don't give up on them. Definitely solid colours for the balloons. All right. Talk about your latest stuff. Bubbles. Bubbles. How do you get all that stuff off the stage? Uh-huh. Because um, you were saying, very careful. Because you said you could get off stage in, you'd like to get off stage in ten seconds. I bet you can't do that for bubble show. For bubbles, <laughs> no, it takes me. Because you've got you've got like bottles with. Well, no, my, no, no, no. My table rolls to the side. Okay, that's okay. Then my paddling pool, for yeah. want of a better term, yeah. is on a mat. Okay. On a, on a sheet, so you can so just, pull, just the sheet. pull the sheet, and that yeah. comes to the side of the stage. Mm. Uh, stages are about two and a half, three feet high. Yeah. My box is two and a half, three feet. I am six foot, so if the box is the box is blocking the audience, so they can't see oh, me. Oh, okay. And then I just empty everything off the side of the stage. Oh yeah, so you've got the box Take on big, stage a, a big, blocking you. Big plastic tub. Yeah. Take the edge of, say, the paddling pool, yeah. just off the edge of the stage, yeah. so that it funnels into the tub. Yes. Yeah. Came up with the same thing myself. Yeah. yeah. If you have a paddling pool, you can quickly squeeze it to make a funnel. Well, I gave it a solid base. No, no even better, yeah. And slit the base down the bottom so that I can fold the two sides to make a V shape. Yeah. And then, then it all. Pulls. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, solid base. Which can be folded to make yeah. a V shape. When it when it comes to bubbles, you only need the for for child in a bubble. You only need the outside part of the paddling pool. Right. 
if you put like an island in the middle. Right. Say, nice. say, say, say you take a okay, pad- I, I get what you're saying. You, you, don't need to fill, pool. you don't need to fill the whole paddling pool. You need to yeah. create like a, like, a, like a moat. A reservoir, a, a, a moat. A ring yeah. of, of juice. So, I mean, that, that would be ideal. That would be my next step of, you know, some guttering or, or something like that. Yeah. So, be good. No, I can't. So, I, first of all, I was trying to work out how to get it out. I was scooping it out with a cup. And then I had a straw, a, a big, big tube, and I was using the siphon method, where, it, where oh, gravity makes the stuff flow my down. My goodness! And then I just realised, hang on, with my one, my, my, my one hasn't got a V shape, so my one doesn't have um, a strong base. But I realised if I just let some air out, and then I can just roll, I can roll the the, the two meter wide paddling, which is way too big anyway, down to uh, about a, a foot square, and then I can quite easily make a V and pour that pour that into a big box. Some risers. Well, there's, there's two ways to go. It's I very find. technical. This <laughs> I, I I find with props. Yeah. There's two ways to go. Yeah. Make it small, and so it collapses down small. Yeah. Or just make it big and do your whole show in it. <laughs> <laughs> Make the prop big and do your whole so, show in it. You were saying yours is what? Yours my paddling pool. About two meters. Yeah, so I can do the meters. whole show with my paddling pool. Yeah, just do everything in there. <laughs> yeah. Just wear, you know, put, wear, wear a pair of wellies. Yeah, do the whole bubble show yeah, in the paddling pool. Put, put, put a table that can that can stand on it. Yeah. And just, you know. That would probably work. Embrace. Embrace whatever. Embrace the problem. Make yeah. it a bonus. Make it a... You use it to your advantage. Make it a bonus. Yeah. I mean, because you could essentially... Just take a big piece of curvy wire, dip it, and, and yeah. you know, rainbow bubble yourself. You could. Mm. All right, I'm going to do my. I'm leaning over, leaning over sideways now, listeners, just to check that I still have memory in this recording device. I do. Okay, we can okay. go into some other stuff. Let's All think. Right. Um, I'm going to take a card at random. Here we go. This is uh, totally improvised. Take what does it card, say? It? Yeah, take a card at random. Let's see what we get. Oh, I think we've done this one. Music versus talking. What do you prefer? Do you have a favourite? Are you uh, a talker? Or are you... Music. Yeah. Unless you've got volunteers on the stage and you need to talk, yeah. really. Although there are some quite good mimey stuff that you can do. Yeah. Um, uh, what's he called? Boy with tape on his face. He's, he's very... He, he's, look out for tape face. Oh yeah, boy with tape on his face. Yeah, yes. he, he, he does a, um, like volunteer stuff without talking. Yes. So, uh, yeah, generally I think routines but to you, music. Yeah, your yeah. music should not have any lyrics as far as I can yeah. tell. Unless, they, uh, like for my Johnny Bubble show, yeah. the music is an instrumental version of Go, Johnny, Go. Which but, is just stage which, name. Yeah, which is, which is pretty much... It, it fits the theme. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think no, no lyrics. Yeah. Very important. And, and as much as possible, no techno music. Because <laughs> somebody, like most of the crowd, is going to hate it. Gonna hate, yeah, I mean, uh, 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 grown ups who are the people that are going to pay you <laughs> don't, like, don't like that. And um, yeah, if, it, if it's glaring. Yeah. There we go. What about uh, microphone? Um, what do you do for your microphone? Use whatever they have on site. Yeah. If you take your own, you need. First of all, you need, you need a jack. Yeah. Which is not really not really a big problem to carry yeah. around a jack. Yeah. But. Uh, it's one more thing you have to carry it, around. It's one more thing. Might lose it. Yeah, and if you've got your own jack, then you need your own microphone. Yeah. And your own receiver, sender and receiver. Yeah. It, it, it's just more trouble than it's worth. Yeah. 
to use whatever they've got, whether it's what, a headset or a handheld or... Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't see how... I have a wireless holder okay. that goes around my neck. Yeah. Yeah, and... I saw it, yeah. Was it the one with the... With the yeah, a bit, 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 bit of magician's rope. So you've got like a with, wire with, yeah, with a, 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 rope. A, a coat hanger. A coat, cut, <laughs> a coat hanger cut and then put... Um, you thread it through take, 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 take the core out of yeah. Magician's soft yeah. cut and row yeah. and put the coat hanger through that. Okay, so basically the microphone... It looks nice. Basically a wireless handheld microphone can be suspended just below your chin and it works fine. It works fine. Cool. And then if they have a headset, as long as you're not eating fire, I mean, yeah. even if you are, just push it to one side. Yeah. So use, use, use whatever mics they have. Yeah. Um, any turning points in your career? Are there any big moments which really helped your career develop or change? Or, or um, I mean, apart from meeting me, of course, of that course. was a huge yeah. turning point. That was a yeah, huge turn on. <laughs> <laughs> um, meeting Roy was kind of kind of key. Yeah. Well, we, when we when we all started that juggling club together, yeah. that was uh, yeah. I suppose that, that that was kind of key, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there was a few people. I yeah. mean, uh, is his name Cal Fong or something? He has a local local Fong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He has uh, he has the not the Mills mess. He has the Singapore mess, doesn't he? The Singapore. Yes, he yeah, he's own moves. He's really yeah, good. Yeah, he patented his own move um, from the club that we started. Yeah, which I think is still going today. Yeah, I think it still is. Perhaps under a different name. I think it's yeah, still goes, doesn't it? Yeah, so I think that, it's at the. Esplanade Underpass. Yes, that's right. That's right. So, so any boys in Singapore look for the Esplanade Underpass probably on a, uh, on a Friday, Friday evening, evening yeah. which is no good for us because we're always working. Yes, this is true. Uh, yes, and, and dinner and dance are much more fun than family days because it's aircon. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, yeah. Uh, what's it like working in Singapore? It's so humid. Any tips for somebody working in a really hot country trying to perform outdoors? Uh, right. Cars are very expensive here, yeah. as you know. Yes, they are. So, taxi is essentially being chauffeur driven. Yeah. So, air con taxi. Yeah. Box on wheels. Yeah. You, you should, shouldn't have to walk more than 100, maybe 150 metres. Pushing your box on wheels. At, at, at any, at any yeah. stage, yeah, yeah. Pushing a box on wheels. But is it hard to do magic and juggling and when, you, when your fingers are dripping with sweat? Yes. Yeah. So... <laughs> Um, a flannel, flannel. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, for me, I would I would sweat more on stage, right? No matter no matter what. Yeah. I, when whenever I go on stage, I'm definitely more sweaty than when I'm stood at the side of the stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it's kind of difficult difficult to tell. I, mean, I, I you know, categorically do not get nervous. I've been doing this for for so long. Really? You don't get nervous? No, what is there to be nervous about? I guess so. Well, for me, it's like sometimes, now that my, I'm in Hong Kong, certain shows that I used to do every single week I get nervous if I'm, if I'm doing something new. Exactly. I mean, something or new. Or something that I haven't done for like three years. Yeah, but that's... Uh, I don't really class that as nerves. Like, it's... You're trying to remember to do everything in an, in an order, no. so you're not in your, like... Yeah natural yeah. equilibristic state yeah. uh, you, you know where yeah. you because I mean, when you when you're doing your established show I mean sometimes I'll be doing my show and I'll be thinking what I'm going to cook for dinner later <laughs> Brilliant. You know, if you're doing a routine to music yeah. and you're juggling and you're just so comfy with it it's, it's it's not you're in the middle of your routine yeah where it's the the standard stuff not not the flashy yeah. endings yeah. and stuff like that it's, yeah mine can wander off yeah I think I'll link I'll have Indian tonight <laughs> what, what did I have yesterday yeah that, that, that sort of thing but um, definitely not if there's no music playing then you're there 100% isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. Um, this one says this is another random card oh if you do get nervous Find someone in the audience that you find attractive and perform for that person. Oh, that's and a good that tip. person only. Oh, I like that. That's a good tip. It, do, you, do you really do that? You do that, you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when, if, if you get nervous, you're not sure, just find someone that you think is really attractive. And perform then, for yeah, them. Then Show off for them. Yeah, then, then, then your normal bass skills kick in. <laughs> <laughs> your flirting skills. Well, Look well, at me, I'm fantastic. I'm well, the yeah. one you want to talk to. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, predominantly the person will feel that you're... 
performing for them. Oh, that was one of my, one of my cards for you, wasn't it? Do you get propositioned a lot? Do people think, oh, this guy is so amazingly attractive and fantastic being on stage? Uh, I used to. You used to. Uh, um, no, I, let, let me finish. Oh, your wife's um, just down the corridor. Be careful what you say. <laughs> uh, I used to put, say, five or six name cards of mine. Yeah. With the, with the sound tech or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Um, but the people that called... Yeah, there was like a few girls and that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> flat, flattered, but no, that 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 stops now. Okay, still. So talking- I'm, I'm I'm not a young man anymore. Yeah. So there, there's certain things when you're young and young and zestful, you can you could say or do. Yeah. Then. And but, now, but then but, slowly but, but, you become but, a dirty old man instead of the young, attractive guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's it, isn't it? You know, yeah. yeah you, you could, 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 be, could be misconstruing. Uh, okay, this ways. is a good one to talk about then. So how mm. about, you do, you're doing this long term like me. You're going to um, go on for as long as you can, when right? you're married, Once you're married with children, you have the libido of a captive panda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so talking about long term then... Um, you're doing it. You're doing this. You've done it for twenty-one years. Um, yeah, yeah, like some, give something, something, yeah, something, give or take. And you're, it's been your full-time job forever. Yeah. Um, so, how do you see the future planning out? Um, do you have Do you have any I thoughts? I now have. I'm Johnny Bubbles. Now has his mega bubble mix. Right. So like toy production. Check it out. It's going to be on on the internet somewhere mm, soon. It will. Be you can soon. buy it, it from him. It will be soon. Johnny Bubble Mega Mix. Mega Mix. <laughs> Mega Mix. <laughs> uh, so I have that. So and then I'm also making stilts and roller bowlers and circus equipment because I I have Big Top Circus, yes. which teaches circus skills to kids in the international schools, the French school, the Dutch school, the Canadian school, overseas family school. School, so what um, you're saying is you're, you're looking at... Uh, extracurricular activities. Yeah. You're not going to totally depend on doing solo one-man shows. My my work, my income is about 50-50 now. Okay, so 50%, 50% s- is solo one-man shows. Uh, yeah, what, what is my show? It's your show. And then 50% is kind of workshops and setting things. Uh, w- just just workshops, workshops. Magic Academy and um, Big Top. And then, and then hopefully one day, now, another 50% will be selling bubble mix, hopefully yeah, one day. Yeah, that's it, 150%, man. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm trying to split my business, 70-40. <laughs> Do you want to take a card at random? Take a card at random? Don't know, look, yeah, random, there you go, random card. Okay. Might be total rubbish, this question, what does it say? It says, how important is it to be self-contained? Oh, this is a, this is a good one, because most of us, we travel around without assistance and... Um, we might have like three or four shows in one day in different places in the in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's got to be um, what you've got has got to be portable, and also when when you get there, um, say you get there and there's no CD player or there's there's no microphone. These days you would play from your phone. Yeah. <laughs> you would find some way to play it through your phone. Yeah. Even. Uh, if there was no microphone, yeah. it's, it's okay. I have, I have a busking history. I can broadcast myself. Yeah, you can do whatever. If you don't have a microphone, yeah. you can, I can remember doing Danger Bubble shows with you and me turning up and there'd only be one microphone. Yeah. And we'd, we'd share it and one person would yell yeah. and the other person would use the microphone. Yeah, it's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah, so you're, so you're saying you're pretty self-contained. Yeah. Uh, you've got pretty much everything you need. If they haven't got a CD player, you can use your phone. Um... But if there isn't something they haven't got, like they haven't got the right microphone, haven't got, the microphone fails, you can just you adapt. You just shout. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You um, maybe do your show backwards. Do your show backwards, huh? Mm. What does that mean? Well, you could do your volunteer activities. You just come on, do something simple. That's right. You wouldn't start. You can't start with your your, your music, music routines if yeah. the, if, the, if no there's no music. music. So you would come on and do something that is impressive without music. Yeah. Yeah. Take a volunteer while they figure out how yeah. to do the music. Yeah. So, I mean, you could essentially start with your big balloon, man in balloon. Yeah. 
as long as they've got electricity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could use that to give them five minutes to find some Something. way of playing yeah. music. Yeah. That would work. If still after five minutes they don't have yeah. any way of playing music. Yeah. Use a volunteer. Yeah, I, I think one of the things I've discovered talking to people is if you do this job long enough, anything that might happen will happen oh, eventually. Yeah. Complete Murphy's Law, isn't it, really? Do you remember that time I fell in the swing pool right before a show, trying to pick up your Diablo? You've forgotten. We were doing a show outdoors, and you were doing your Diablo, and it, it just went over. We were backstage just practicing. Oh, it was like Wild Wild Wet or, or something, something like that. Like that. And, yeah. I thought, and I just leaned in to get the Diablo. It was just, it was just beyond my fingertips, so I kept on leaning. And I thought, oh, I'll just go all the way in. <laughs> I, 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 I do remember. You only went up to about your chest. It was like a, was like a day out. It's not like you went all the way into the deep end, is it? I think, I think you touched your hand at the three foot, at the three foot level. Yeah. And you were just wet in, in, in a diagonal from waist, uh, to, from waist to shoulder. Yes, but what can go wrong will go wrong. Okay, um, uh, cause that was me making a mistake. Oh, I can think of one mistake you made. Do you remember the first time you ever rehearsed Danger Brothers? Oh, in the sack. <laughs> ben, there's no sack. Oh, Ben. Oh, no, Ben. Oh, my lips are the... not... Oh, no. We, we practised the shit out of that. It was the first so, time. So much so that we left it. <laughs> we left it at the rehearsal space. It was the first time. We never really bothered rehearsing. It, it was in a nightclub as well. Yeah, so yeah, this, we had um, we had an act called the Danger Brothers. And it was oh, just... and we ended up doing Fire Diablo. Oh, yeah. So we, we did Fire Diablo, and although we, it, it didn't drop and spin off, no. it was very, very, very close yeah. at, at one stage. Didn't and, it? Yeah, and, yeah we, we, we decided to just cut the thing short yeah because yeah. it was going to roll off across. If, if we dropped it the, the fiery Diablo would have rolled yeah, racing well, across the floor into someone's well, they're, they're, they're metal yeah and they're hot they're, they're, yeah they are if, if you've ever done a fire Diablo yeah. it, even outdoors on grass if you if you, somehow you miss they boom oh, and God. they whiz off yeah, yeah. fire yeah. look it, it's safer than it looks but, it, but there are dangers but, but things like fire that. Diablo no, they are not safe. They're not safer than they look. No, no they are. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, 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 you know, I, I bought one once, used it five or six times. Yeah. Just mainly back garden. Yeah. With yeah. friends sort yeah. of thing. And I used it once or twice for, for outdoor shows yeah. in the night time. And no, I mean, if, if you miss it, Oh, if it if it hits someone or something or it'd be at the end yeah. of your career, wouldn't it? Well, well you get sued. Just the, just the idea of hurting somebody is, Her, yeah. is, is enough, isn't it? Very good, John. Yeah, I'm glad that that you didn't just think about the money like I did. No, no, no. Very good. <laughs> You're a better person. Than me. <laughs> uh, I better explain the sack thing. I don't. Well, maybe I shouldn't because it makes no, we, bad. Um, well, we just just. Listeners, we we used to do a, a sack escape, so like a postal sack with a drawstring at the top, and we do an escape from there where I would do a costume change inside, come out in like a ladies' nightgown. Yeah, you'd be handcuffed, put in the sack, the sack would be tied up, and somehow you would escape. Yeah, and we, we rehearsed for the first time seconds. ever. Yeah, and uh, we had everything apart from the sack, which we, I forgot. We got to the show and it wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could have done the invisible sack trick, but unfortunately we weren't skilled enough to pull it off. But I think, en- Entirely my fault. I think the key is, don't let the organisers know that you're panicking and that you've left something behind. Just bluster it out. Just yeah. go on. Yeah, this is what our show is. It's been doing an extra ten minutes because there isn't a sack, but don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> All thriller, no filler. <laughs> yeah. How do you... Um, how do you uh, how do you market yourself? That's a that's a whole new podcast. Could do a whole podcast. For on that. someone with an advertising background, yeah, very poorly. Really? Yeah. Um, Ninety percent of my stuff comes through word of mouth. Yeah. And people that um, companies that I've used before. Okay. Uh, my wife always tells me off because I perform the things that I like to do. Yeah. Not necessarily what the market is demanding. Right, okay. Well, it's up to you, isn't it? It's your, it's your, it's your job? Yeah, you know, so, I mean, if I, if I did a different type of 
circus show or a different type of magic show, I could probably get more right. more work in in a, a more specific genre. But okay. for me, I like a little bit of magic, a little bit of bubbles, a little bit of circus, right. a little bit of costume chain. Yeah, I, you know, a, a real um, variety. I came across a, a fascinating way to market yourself. I don't know if it works. I might try it. One guy said, if you're doing a birthday party and the mum wants a discount, say, yeah, I'll give you a discount if, you, uh, if you'll friend me or like my, web, my, my Facebook page and so, I can, I can, so then I can tag myself and the photos you put, you, you don't tell them, and then, then you can tag your name into any photos and stuff they'll do of their kids' party. So you do the kids' party and of course mm. they're going to put all the photos up of the kids' birthday yeah. party and be, then you'll be in those photos, perhaps with your box with your name on. Uh, my friend and Alex tag, was, was saying something similar. That sounds it. interesting. Yeah, that is, this is all that new networking media stuff yeah. that they do. Did you do any of that? Um, I was like, no, not really. But you've got, you got quite a fair amount on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a YouTube channel and yeah. a Vimeo channel. That's um, What is it? Well, I'll advertise that. Uh, event Magic 2010 okay. at YouTube. You or go. Vimeo is just Event Magic. Yeah. Uh, okay, do you want to pick up a random one? I forced, I forced it on you! <laughs> I forced it on you! <laughs> you, did, you did a classic four. <laughs> Worst gig ever. Worst gig ever. Oh, he doesn't need the worst one. Any bad ones. Let me, let me... I remember the time I burnt down Suntech City. Just after it was built. <laughs> What's my worst gig ever? I remember the time I went to... Um, I just started doing stand-up comedy in Hong Kong. I'd done like three weeks of it. Three shows for a very friendly, soft opening launch. And someone said, hey, can you do a stand-up com- Can you do a comedy show in Macau for these big heads of the casinos? And I had, my, I had my variety act comedy show, the one I did in Singapore with the giant balloon, the oh, mini okay. Elvis puppet, so I thought I could do that. And then at the last minute I said, oh no, we saw you do actually like stand-up comedy, just Jerry Seinfeld. And I'd done this three times in my life. And yet I just arrived in Hong Kong, so this is a big opportunity, yeah, I, I, maybe I should just go for it. Total disaster, so embarrassing. <laughs> On stage, uh, I... in, a, in, in a totally... Just, it wasn't anything like a comedy club where I'd been. I remember my worst Terrible. Ever now. It was at uh, Goodwood Park Hotel. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was for uh, uh, dinner and dance. Yeah. About 300 people. Yeah. And um, we did our costume change. All nice, everybody clapping, everything, all that. The costume change was, was great. She has my wife. Was, yeah. was, she was very awesome at that when, 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 we, when we did it. And then after that, I just felt the energy in the room just just wasn't there. It wasn't just wasn't what it normally was. Okay, so, so, so I'm doing corporate show for for yeah, adults. Yeah, corporate yeah, dinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you know, first five minutes is costume change, yeah. and um, then I do like a, a swallow a balloon or so, something along those lines. And then a volunteer, and then the, the thing with the volunteer, just like the energy was like strange and that okay. sort of stuff. And you know, I, I, I went th- I know, professional, went through and you know, like complete all my show, yeah, sort of thing. And then uh, when I was getting in the cab and leaving and that sort of thing. The organizer, Dennis, oh, yeah, said they had a new member of staff yeah. organize their dinner and dance. Yeah. You did this company three months ago, exactly the same show. Oh, they'd seen it. They'd seen everything. it. Oh, they'd no. seen everything. They had one new PA, like the yeah. MD's PA, yeah. and she went, oh, this guy's great. Yeah. Right, well, da 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 da. Oh, that was their fault. Yeah, 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 but I mean, as me on the stage, it's like, oh, you know, I, I, I was wondering what on earth, I, what, what, what is it? Oh. You know, have I lost my mojo? Yeah, you know, but yeah, but they, they'd seen it before. Right. Oh. She was very, we, we very should, we, should, we can't leave without talking about this. You've done solo shows, but you've also done two man shows with me, and you've done two person shows with your wife. Yeah, that's right. Um, what do you prefer? Is it, is it easy? I like doing, I like doing two man shows. Yeah. I do, um, or being part of an ensemble. Yeah. Um, it, as you know, when we're on stage while you're performing, I'm there. Should you know, should something fall out of your pocket, I would just pick it up and put it. Yeah. In, you know, there, 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 there's a lot less that can go wrong. Plus, you get you get 
a little break. Yes, the so attention's you, you, on someone else for a few minutes. The yeah, other, the other so then, then you can go and set up for your yeah. for your next bit. Yeah, and then then there's the interaction. So if you say a thirty minute show, yeah, it's like ten minutes of you, ten minutes of me, ten minutes of together. To, together. But you're only of those ten minutes. Yeah, it's not, not as yeah, much yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's just not as much work. It's a lot more fun when you're sort of juggling around yeah. the guy, you play off each other. Yeah. And Terry, terrified. <laughs> <laughs> you're making up jokes. Yeah. That's blown it. Oh, in case you missed it, that was the best joke in the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah you we, pumped me up, that was good. <laughs> yeah, we did some, we were quite good together. We yeah. did some quite wacky the stuff. The Danger Brothers, that was us. Yeah, we did some festivals and stuff. And I am John Danger now. You are John Danger. on stage now. I think you were good because um, but somehow our egos didn't seem to get in the way, you know. I think you were quite, I think you were quite kind to me. You kind of gave me the spotlight sometimes, quite heavy. No, I mean, be silly not. jumping around in my mm-hmm. red underwear. Ah, well, you said you, 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 you were more prepared to be silly. Whereas <laughs> I, 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 I'm scared to not be cool. Yeah, no, which is great. So we, yeah, which we, we could play off each other. Yeah, we didn't we didn't overlap too much. Yeah, we could play off each other. It was really good. It was great fun. Yeah, it was. It was great. It was. Danger Brothers. We should do it again sometime. We certainly will. All right, Absolutely. John. Brilliant talking to you, man. And talking to you, mate. Thanks very John much. John Danger. <laughs> hey. Yeah, it's great. So that was John Heron, or was it? Well, <laughs> we carried on talking, so I switched on my recorder again. And we've got a couple of appendices um, to this podcast. The first one is talking about how to film your show with a spy gadget and a remote control while you're on stage. Here we go, John. Let's go back to this. So this is a little bit extra. This is a little bit extra. How to Ideas your for show. filming your show. Okay, this is an idea. Not tried yet, right? Um, yeah, I've done it once with, with a, a watch. Okay, come on, tell us. Tell us. Um, when they have all these spy gizmos now, like pens yes. and lighters, watches, yeah. keychains, yeah. and yeah. then they have the little micro camera in there. Yeah. So if, uh, for instance, you had a pen yeah. that has a little camera in it, yeah. if you just take some black gaffer tape yeah. and stick it to the microphone holder... The microphone stand, yeah. The microphone stand, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then or one of the speakers, yeah. if the speakers are high up, yeah. and you can just video your show. Video your show. Wow. Well, another thing I thought of was you could just take a laptop yeah, and put the laptop open in the middle of the stage the and use the webcam. Yeah. Because you could watch yourself perform. Yeah. And, yeah. it's, and for, the, for the audience, it's just a just a, a, a little black box. That's, yeah, there's that's black boxes on stage anyway. Blo- speakers blo- blocking things. off your feet. Yeah, yeah that's it. Oh, so that's brilliant. You get a cheap second-hand laptop yeah. and just yeah, and video everything that you do. And what were you saying about do you edit and what editing? Ah, yes. If you are, if someone is videoing your show yeah. for you, yeah. Um, if you, if you have a set routine, yeah. Great, have them video, video all that. Mm-hmm. Anything that doesn't need to be videoed, stop. Right. So, uh, record the fancy throw and catch, yeah. to stop. Yeah. You, know, you don't need you going to the side of the stage to Pick swap the props, yeah. to do this, to do yeah. that, or anything. It, it's, it's a pain to edit. Right. I got a friend of mine to do it, and I saw him just stopping and starting the thing all the time. Yeah. And I thought, Ugh, you know, because that's not the way I do it. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, Ugh. you know, I didn't obviously yeah. didn't say anything. Yeah. He's very kindly yeah. helping me out. Yeah. But then when I came to edit, it was almost edited it, already. It, yeah, it was pretty much pretty much done. I just put some transitions and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And boom, it was done. So that's a good idea. Thank you, Lawrence. Save some time. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you've got a remote control. Yeah. You can, you know, you can record what you, whatever, you need, whatever you need to record. Oh, if you had a remote control for your laptop for your or your pen camera on stage, yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah. You could have your own promotional video done by the time you finished a 30 minute stage show. That's true. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, 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 I think of, of them all, the laptop is probably the best. Yeah. Because then you, you could literally edit in the taxi on the way home. Yeah. 
Yeah, God, I mean, it's, that's really cool. And they are small now, laptops, yeah. and the, the cameras are really good. Yeah. Has the industry changed in Singapore? So you've been here since 1993. Um, yeah, yeah, it has. Um, especially for magic. Oh. Magic now encompasses a lot more than it used to. Oh. Um, oh, because you know, you got your Chris Angels and those sort of things, you know, they were yeah. goth. Yeah. You know, your David Blaine black t shirt street magic, which is just magic. On the street, yeah, wearing a t shirt. Not, <laughs> not in a building. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have a top hat. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, now they I mean, with, what with technology and that sort of thing, there's all sorts. My favourite stuff is uh, UV okay. and black art. That is what. That is where I am going this year with ah. a complete blacked out room, ultraviolet and um, laser, that sort of thing. Yeah, I've done it. Done it once for three M, and it was it, it it went fantastically well. Cool. And well, a few moments later, I was switching on my recorder again because John was talking about his all new black light show. Now this is something brand new for him, um, and even more new for me. Um, go to YouTube and watch his video, JD Black Magic 2015, and that will make this next little bit a bit more understandable. And yet we're back again with appendix number two. No, appendix. Okay, we just went onto YouTube and we looked at what's it called? JD. JD for John Danger. Black Magic. Black Magic. 2015. Okay, so that's a real recent show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I put 2015, I think it was December... 2014. Yeah. Yeah. But so, watching a video, it's, it's a Black Magic then. show, All right, and I'm again, I think it shows <laughs> your amazing versatility and variety, John. Well, I made that, that the buffering thing there. I'm very... That, that, what, what buffering thing? Very proud of. What, 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 what buffering? Oh, <laughs> that, that, that's part of YouTube, isn't it? No, that's on, that's on stage. Oh! <laughs> I thought you were joking. No, no, no. I, 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 a white circle. Yeah. 15% less white circle next to it. Oh! So it's live. Oh! Oh, my. I thought you were joking, John. No, I, th no, I thought no. it was YouTube just being slow. No, no, no. The video opens up with the buffering, the, with the circle, the buff, the, which is what YouTube does for when it's buffering and downloading yes. and getting ready. But you see that on stage. But you were doing it live. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, well, the idea is it's video effects yeah. without a video. Yeah. So yeah. Things, are, things are disappearing and appearing. If you, if you watch, you see, you see, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't disappear it very well. <laughs> oh well. So you're doing a black light show, and I think what was interesting for me when you were talking about this is uh, if someone's trying to do something like this for a corporate event, you've got to be on first. Yes, it has to be an opening act. Because you've got so much things to set up on stage. Well, you need to black out the, the, the whole room, including the stage. Everything. Exit lights, everything. So do you need to rehearse, for, get to the hall earlier, or just turn up and say, look, you've got to turn everything off? You've got uh, to turn everything off. I, I let them know in advance. Yeah. And... So who's this? Uh, that's a girl called Luca. Okay. Don't know why I asked. She's a French, French Singaporean girl. Um, yeah, she's very talented. That's a very obscure comment to make for an audio podcast. Who's this? Yes. I'm watching on YouTube. JD Black Magic 2015. Okay. You'll, you'll see the girl in the luminous green dress. That's who so... we're talking about. This is, you've got, actually, you can only see two people on stage, but you send us four of you. Yes. So you're in charge, you're directing this. Yeah. How is it like having, being in charge of four people? I guess you like being in charge of you more than I did, because you do run a talent management agency. Um, Isn't it stressful? Are they going to turn up on well, time? Are they going to do it, it properly? Well, are you, you going to get angry? Creative are people, you, it's par for the course. I, what I did was, I have my two three minute sections yeah she did whatever she wanted to do for her three minute sections okay it's okay all right so um yeah so you, you need a lot of black velvet you see i i've seen other people do it and they would just have a, a small backdrop yeah 
and but you then, did the whole then if, if there's anybody dressed in black and they go past the board you're going to see them everything given away so you, you cover the whole of the backstage the whole of the back of the stage in black yes you could I, I took three separate curtains the next time I do it I will probably just take one big piece of wow. black material and hoist it over the wooden backdrop yeah. that they have yeah and uh, I guess your rehearsing has, has got a bit better than when me and you tried it all those years ago. And all those behind. <laughs> the sack. <laughs> the sack. Because <laughs> now, now you're in charge of four people, but you gave, um, but no, you no. gave, you gave the, 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 the girl, the woman dancer, just her own time well, you, to do whatever she wanted. If you're working with creative people, yeah. let them create. Let them create, yeah. It's, it's as simple as that. But it must be quite tightly choreographed, some of the stuff, so you must have practiced again and again. How, how long did you well, practice? We do, um, okay, again, like my three minute, say, say, say my two minute, three minute juggling yeah. set. Yeah. Don't need to practice that. No. It's the segues between. Right. Yeah. Where she disappears and I appear. Yeah. That's what you have to practice. All right. Amazing. And, and to check out angles and yeah. that sort of thing. Who can, who can see what from where? Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, the, we did it and it, it went very well. Yeah, I'm going to do a diluted version of just me in about a week's time. Oh, it's amazing, John. Got so many stuff, so much stuff. Bubbles, magic, and now UV black light shows. I'm going to switch off my recorder again now, but I'll probably have to switch on again in 10 minutes if you think there's anything else to talk about. And yes, I did. John also gave me some tips about how to blow bubbles with your hands. Basically, um, covering your hands with concentrated uh, bubble mix. And he also talked about how to put a kid inside a bubble and where to place the bubble juice on the outer ring of, the, uh, of your prop. Well, this is a bit tricky to understand, of course. Um, so go to my website, uh, watch this podcast, where there's also a video showing you what what on earth we're talking about. But it's great stuff. I think this is, is this the chip? This is just for me, basically. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take the concentrate. Yeah. Take 20 ml. Yeah. And rub it on your hands. Yeah. Put water on your hands, whichever which way you like. Yeah. And then do it. Oh, lovely. And then when it eventually pops, just put more water again. You don't need... The, yeah. the solution will get thinner and thinner, but it just, it just goes for just so long. Brilliant. It, yeah. And you were recommending if you're putting... If you've got a ring which the kid's got to go inside, you can rub concentrate around that ring. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're doing... You've got, you've got your paddling pool and the kids in... You're trying to get the kids inside the bubble. But if the inner rim is wet the bubble will creep in and get smaller is that what you're saying yeah oh. so you want, you want, you want if only the out if only the outside rim is wet the bubble will creep out and get bigger out. yes so it makes it easier to get the kid to stay yeah yeah, yeah yeah then it stays oh man it stays on the outside ring rather than the inside ring. oh that's interesting that's if you've crazy. ever if you've ever tried it without an island for them to stand on in the middle it does it creeps yeah it, creeps it into will them, won't it? it bends in yeah so what you need is it to be wet all the outside, around the outside. The outside rim wet. Yeah. The outside rim of the pool to be wet, but the inside rim of the pool to be dry. Yeah, I, I... And yes, uh, that is it, I promise. That is John. Thank you very much for listening. And once again, some of this stuff was quite technical. So if you go to my website, thebigbenshow.com, um, you'll see a link to this podcast and there will also be videos on that as well so as you as you watch the podcast when there's something as you yeah as you listen to the podcast you literally will be watching bits of videos to show you what on earth is we're talking about all right guys it's fantastic talking to you next week we'll be back with another great interview take care spread the word have fun <laughs>